When we last left off, we had crafted our 808 sound by taking a kick drum and a bass, putting those together until they sounded like one. Pretty good starting point. I'm going to take away all these additional loops. Let's just focus on one bar for now. Loop. No loop. Just to stay organized, before I move on, I want to name my two tracks. Down at the bottom, if we click the little sliders icon, when I go to rename them, I want to keep part of the original sample name. And the reason I'm doing this is because once we rename it, there's not going to be an indicator on which sample was used. Just like our 808, we're going to layer two different sounds to shape our snare. I'll tap on the plus icon, MIDI instruments, drums, drum pads. I like the clap from Ultra Fat 808. Now we'll go for a snare. I think it's going to be the new wave kit that has a good body, a good sustain. Just like I did with the 808, I want to name both of those new tracks. Before we start recording, we need to set a loop region. In the top bar up here, I'll double click. Start with the snare. All right, before we get too out of hand. So I feel like the timing on that wasn't very solid. We're gonna go into the notes and tighten it up. We'll click on the MIDI that we just created. Edit. I want this to be the hardest hitting snare. So tap and hold. Velocity, that one's going to be loud. The one at the beginning is coming on a little too strong. Back that off. I also want this leading one to work more as a ghost note, so it's going to have a really low velocity. It's almost easier to just delete the note and repaint it, then try to move it around. Now I'm going to copy and paste those MIDI hits into our clap sample. Tap on the MIDI, copy. Tap on the track for the clap. Tap and paste. Let's see. We need to gain stage the volume so it sounds like one instrument. Right now the clap seems to be coming through the most prominent, so I'll start there. Starting with the clap, we'll double click on the icon. Down in the middle, 
FX. Tap on the plus symbol under the none preset. Add. Go over to tone. Graphic EQ. And like we've done before, we'll take all of the settings off and listen to them as we add them one by one to see what they're contributing. Remember, when we're exiting out of these effects, instead of clicking to the side of the screen, which will close the panel, we really want to click that back button in the top left. Doing that will ensure those changes are held next time we open up the project. Now I'm going to solo the snare and do subtractive EQing. Tap FX. Add. Tone. Graphic EQ. Like usual, take it all away. Now that we have this open, let's look into adding some more effects. We previously had good results at removing some sharper higher end noise by using the feedback killer. Let's see how that makes the clap sound. We're looking to kind of round it off. It takes a lot of that sparkle, compresses it a little bit, and I think that's going to add to it. Let's jump over to the snare, save those changes. Just like we did with the 808, if we use Feedback Killer for our attack and kind of shaping that, then we can use distortion to accentuate the body and help that cut through. Let's add our distortion effect, BL driver. I think that does help it make it sound like one instrument. I think I actually took too much out of the mid-range. It seems a little hollow. Let's go back into the snare. And I want to look at the EQ. Now let's check the clap. Back button to save our changes. Down arrow to see our tracks. Double tap on the icon. We're getting the hang of this. Next, let's get into that MIDI data and maybe remove a few hits on the clap or the snare to see how it accentuates. That full velocity sounds a little too much. And then let's take off that last hit in the snare. It's got a little pop to it. Now we're starting to build up some snare rolls. Now that we've gone through this process twice with both the 808 and the clap and snare, 
Let's review our workflow before moving on. I try to stay organized from the beginning. Name tracks so that their role or their sample is obvious. Gain stage samples as you go so they sound relative to each other. Start off with just one bar and slowly build up your loop over time. I also look for ways to add variety to the beat. Our loudest velocity hits should still sound good when they're properly gain staged, and our lowest hits, our ghost notes, should still be audible. Then I start to explore effects in order to bring all of those samples into a cohesive whole. Subtractive EQ highlights what a sample is best at and carves away the unpleasant frequencies of the sample. I found that Feedback Killer was really useful in taking off the sharp edge of the kick and clap samples. Adding distortion to both the bass in the 808 and the snare help give these more presence, which helps on smaller speakers. Throughout this whole process, I also keep in mind that this might not be my finished drum pattern. I'm just starting to layer on sounds and seeing what I like. Now that we've reviewed these basics, we'll be ready to add some more complexity as we move towards adding hi-hats, creating melodies with things like synthesizers and guitars, and eventually adding our vocals. Thanks for joining me.